Hi friends, Adam here. In the last video, we finished off this chart where we created an average line that is dictated by the comparison that we pick. So if we want to compare to team, position, or player average, maybe we can do that and the line will change, the value will change. One thing that I want to quickly mention about this chart, because it's a visual that I sometimes like, is instead of having a line, what, what we can do is if I edit this chart quickly, and go to customize, I'll go to the series and pick my, my line series here, which is the player average. Sometimes I like it to be a stepped area. So I'll select stepped area here. And all that does is it highlights underneath the line in a certain color, you can adjust the transparency among um, a variety of other things. And for me, that that's a more, it's an easier way for me to tell, okay, this is below the line and this is above the line. Um, just because of the way that it, that it looks. So sometimes I go with something like that. And I just wanted to expose you to that option. And I'll just keep it as is for now. And in this video, we are going to duplicate this chart essentially um, and create another one. And we already did all the hard work. We might just have to clean up a thing or two. And creating this new chart should be relatively seamless. If we go to the ch uh, our chart data, the first thing that we're going to want to do is this is something that I always do. Not necessarily, I'm usually pretty good about it on my own, but when I shoot these videos, I oftentimes just forget about things or I'm trying to teach at the same time, so I overlook things. But pretty much, like I notice here with this dates column, or this dates formula, I'm gonna have to lock everything in. So I'm gonna put a dollar sign before the, the B, the two, the B, pretty much put a dollar sign before everything here before each letter, each set of letters and each set of numbers for the cell references. So before the B2B, the AA14, for the A and for the two, for the A, for the AA, for the four, for the E2, E, A, A, seven. And uh, for those of you that don't know, um, there are hotkeys to toggle through these cell locking things. On my computer, uh, the way that it, it just doesn't make sense for me to do it like that because it requires too many fingers in different places um, and it makes it less efficient. But you might be able to, so for example, you might be able to hold down, what is it? It's For me, it's function key F4. If I hold down the function key in F4, that's what I'm doing now. It kind of toggles between locking different aspects. Um, but that requires two hands, either because my hand isn't big enough or anyways. Uh, so that's why I do individual dollar signs. And I'm just checking each of these to make sure that there are dollar signs in the right places so that we can copy and paste everything that we have here over and pretty much get what we need. So, so far this looks good. I'm just going to, because I added some dollar signs, um, I'm going to copy all these formulas and go to the bottom of my sheet and paste them so that they apply throughout. And now I just want to check this here to see, okay, we have to put dollar signs for the AA and the 21 and click enter. And that'll lock that in. Now what we should be able to do is we can copy all the stuff that we have. Or actually let's we're gonna have to change things anyway, so we'll just copy this stuff right here and paste it one column over. And it just so happened that this is now equal to VO2 max, but this might not be equal to VO2 max or your second metric. And if that's the case, you want to go equal sign for right below metric one and go to your testing dashboard and select this metric or whatever's in your drop down menu and click enter, just like we did with the CMJ average. Now we're going to have to change a couple of things, not, not in a major way, but really. As long as these dates are the same as these dates, like you're not, you don't want two different date ranges for the charts. The only thing that we are going to have to change is we are going to have to change this AD4 and all these matches. Right now we're matching everything, um, including the averages and the values for each date to CMJ average or whatever is in AD4, which is our first metric. Now we want to match them to our second metric, which is AK4. So if we just change the Ds in all of our things, in all of our match formulas to Ks, which will be right there, and it will be 
Oh, we don't have to deal with that one. But this one here, we'll go, instead of AD, we'll go AK. And same thing with the position average, we'll change to AK inside the match. Same thing with the player average, average we'll change to AK. And now we can copy all those formulas and paste them to the bottom of our sheet. And great. I'm not concerned with these errors. Uh, that's that's fine. Uh, and let's just change it to metric two so that um, it's more clear what's going on. Apparently, this person doesn't have much VO2 max data, and that should be okay. Now we actually have all of the data that we need to create our second chart. So in our testing dashboard, what we can do is we can copy the chart that we already have and paste it over here right under the VO2 max area, and we can click on the three dots, edit chart, and now we just change the ranges for our axes in our series. So for dates, we can click on the select data range. Instead of AC4 to AC1000, let's just check, see what it should be. It should be AJ4 to AJ, and we'll just remove the 1000, even though it is 1000 for now, um, for, all the, for all of our dates, and click OK. Now for CMJ average, we can click on that series, click on the box to select a new data range. Instead of AD4 to AD1000, we're looking at AK. And then our last one will be AL. Let's just try to remember that. So this is AK4 to AK to get all of our VO2 mass data or the data for our second metric. Click OK. And now for the average, we can edit that range and L. So AL4 to AL is our average line, and we can click OK. And there we go. That's our chart. We only have one piece of data. So one thing that you might want to consider doing is adding in additional criteria into your... Oh man, I didn't think I was going to go over this. This is going to get really complex, but I might as well go over it if you want it. So, or if it's helpful. So we have all these blank dates. Um, that's okay in some things. Maybe it's not okay in your world. Uh, let's just pick a different metric. So let's say we do body weight. Oops. There, so now we can see that we can pick two different metrics and, and everything will work fine. Um, but if there is lacking data, so if we pick the O2 max again, we're going to have these blank dates. One thing that you can do, I'm going to go through it quickly because I think it's just an, an add-on, like a nice-to-have thing. So if we go to our chart data, we can adjust these formulas a little bit. So the main thing that we're going to have to do is with these dates. Um, I didn't want to go back. It, it's complicated already with we're like, but anyways, so what we're saying here is we're going to get us a unique list of dates and sort them. Um, that's what this is. We want dates when the dates are greater than or equal to AA13 or greater than or equal to the start date. And when the dates are less than or equal to the end date, and when the athlete's name is equal to the athlete that we pick, and when either you know the the event is equal to this event, which is training camp, or the event is equal to this event, which which is in season, and we control whether or not these events appear here through check boxes. Um, but in any case, before we do this plus stuff, we can add in another piece of criteria, <laughs> and because I don't want to do it again. What we need to add for our tree is also we only want the dates for when the metric that we pick, which in this case is VO2 max, is greater than zero. Because right now it's bringing in dates um, that don't consider whether or not the metric is there or not. So to do that, we're going to steal. I'm going to go into this formula, this VO2 max formula. We're going to steal this index match stuff. Index the testing data, match it to AK4 and the testing headers. So let's select all this stuff. We'll copy it, go into this date formula, and right after this comma, before the parentheses and the plus stuff, we'll throw this in and we'll do greater than zero and then another comma. So what this is saying now is we're saying, and also we only want the dates when whatever metric um we have uh whenever that data uh whatever is inside there it, inside that column 
for the metric that we pick is greater than zero. And if we click enter now, we will get an error. Now, why is that? Let's look over it. Is a filter has mismatched range sizes. Essentially, what this is saying is that our, our um, named range includes a different range than what is in some of these things. And the reason for that is, I wonder if I can just, let's look at our named ranges real quick so I can show you what's going on, because this is important to understand. If we go to our named ranges, we're going, testing data is A to DB, which is includes the, the cell number one, so, or row number one. In all of this, the rest of this formula, we're going B2 to B, or A2 to A. What we need to do here is we need to remove the twos, so we'll go A to A, and we'll go B to B for all of our stuff instead of B2 to, to B. And we need to do that for everything. So this E2 to E, we need to just go E to E. And for this E2 to E, we'll just go E to E, and we can click Enter. And now we'll get our date. And now, well, this won't work yet because now we need to change the formulas. Because like I said, actually, a couple minutes ago is if we have new dates here, then we're going to have to make more adjustments in these formulas. Because right now we are looking for the data for the date that is equal to AC5, which is this date, not this date. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, three, six dates in this list, which is why we still have six numbers here and only one date in this list. So we need to change this instead of AC5. We can change this to AJ5. And the probably the quickest way to do this is through a find and replace. What we can do is we can highlight all these cells in the first row, or this row right here, and go to edit, find and replace, and we'll find dollar sign AC5, and we'll replace it with dollar sign AJ5. Right, AJ5 is where the new dates are. We can also search within the formula. That's what we should do. And go to replace all and click done. And it looks like there was no change. And that's okay because we only applied it to one row. Now, if we copy these formulas and we paste them to the, to the bottom, now we only have data for that date. So now we're tying in this data with this date, and we made sure that this date only includes dates where whatever metric we pick is greater than zero. And now, because our chart is off of this data, if we go to our testing dashboard, we'll just have one data point. Yeah, that was long. Uh, Long-winded, complicated, I know. Hopefully it makes sense, and we have one more opportunity to do this now. So let's go into this formula here. And we can do the same exact thing that we did here. But actually, let's do a shortcut. So let's copy this formula and let's paste it right here. Now we only have one date for both. And the only thing that we have to change in this formula is what we're matching to. So right now we're looking for all the dates where AK4 is greater than zero or the VO2 max values are greater than zero. But we want this to be for all the dates where CMJ average is greater than zero. So we just need to change AK4 to AD4 and click enter. And now our dates are back here uh, where we need them for this metric. All the dates where CMJ average is greater than zero are shown. And here, all the dates where VO2 max is greater than zero or where it exists are shown. Now this may be something that you want or it may be something that you don't want, right? Because when we show dates that don't have data that are part of these sessions, that gives us information. It tells us, hey, this player has no data for that session. And maybe it reminds us, oh, that player was hurt or, oh, that player should have had that session. So these are just two different ways of going about these calculations. And I wanted to show you both, again, from a learning perspective. The way that you communicate this stuff and the way that you represent it, now you have a choice, right? You could have, you could do what we did before. You could do um, this calculation that we did here. Just because I'm, I'm lazy, I'm not going to adjust anything now. I'll just leave it as it is. 
And here's our testing the dashboard now. If we change a different metric, again, it still should accommodate for the body weight weights or dates and stuff. And great, now we have two interactive charts that number one are adjusted by the date range. Um, so change the date range, change the charts, change the comparison, which barely, barely changes sometimes. Um, and we can choose to include or not include sessions, right? We don't want to include training camp, fine. We do, we don't include in season. Well, now we really don't have much, um, but, but now we have this interactive experience with our historical data to a certain extent. And that's all I got in this video. In the next one, we're gonna build out like an, I don't know if we're gonna do it all in one video, but we'll build out a historical database um, or pretty much a, a, a historical table, an interactive table of information for this person over time, um, which uses these, these filters as well. And that'll be, I think it's a really valuable one to go through. So thank you for watching. And all right, a little bit about me. Like, what is my favorite sport to play? I love to play basketball. I haven't in many years because I had an elbow injury that I probably need surgery for that I haven't gotten. So as of late, I've been a big, big into pickleball and tennis. Pickleball is awesome if you haven't played before. It's like uh, it's like ping pong, but like real life size. It's like life size ping pong, if you will, where you have a wooden paddle and there's like kind of like a wiffle ball that you're hitting around over the net. It's a fun game. Anyways, leave a comment with your favorite sports to play uh, below. I'm excited to hear about them. And if you enjoyed the content, please give the video a like and. If you're enjoying this entire series and the content that's that's coming through this channel in general, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. And thank you again for watching, and I'm excited to see you in the next video.